Hey everyone, it is I once again, Mr. Cinema Junkie, and I'm here to talk about a couple of movies that I saw on Netflix. Oh yes, Netflix, I love that stuff so much. Damn you, Netflix, for being so cool. I know some people have their complaints about the service, but eh, you know, sure there was a time when you could get both DVDs and the streaming service for one low price. Then I guess they figured they were losing money, so they separated the two services. Okay. You can either choose one or choose the other or get them both for a higher price. Options are still there. I stick with the streaming though. And uh, yeah, recently I just saw two movies. One was American Mary and the other was the remake of Maniac. Uh, let's start with American Mary. Not what I thought it was going to be. Let's just say that right off the bat. Not what I was expecting. Um, but it was an excellent flick. I uh, really got into it, thought it was great, thought the character development was really awesome. Uh, it's an offering by the Soska sisters. They knocked it out of the park with this one. Uh, story about a girl who's a uh, medical student. And she's got kind of a ball buster of a teacher who you kind of get the feeling that he really gets on her case because he cares. He wants to see her do her best. You ever see those shows where someone like really rides the one student and she takes it all personal and she gets all butthurt? Like, you don't ride the rest of them like that. And, he, and then at the end you find out, I only do it because you're my star pupil and I expect the best from you. That's the feeling I got from this guy. You find out later that's not the case at all. He's just a dick. One of those snotty dicks. He's a surgeon, and just like most surgeons, they think they're God, and, you know, whatever they do is okay. Well, she falls victim to some wrongdoing by some of these surgeons. She gets invited to a party, and, of course, she gets to rub elbows with some of the top surgeons. And Being a student, who wouldn't want to do that, right? So she goes in, you know, thinking that things are cool, and things turn out not so cool. She becomes a victim. Uh, not to give away too much of the story, but they take advantage, they drug her and take advantage of her. Uh, specifically the instructor that's breaking her nuts. So, um, during the court, between the beginning and the victimization of Mary, uh, she gets, she, she's trying to make some extra money. Her bills are like way due, she's, she's got her phone was about to be cut off, her rent is due, and uh, she goes to make some quick cash at a strip joint. Um, she fills out the application and on there she says she's a medical student, so on and so forth, and uh, before she can spin around the brass pole, a medical emergency comes up, and they offer her five grand to help them out. She takes it. Five grand, easy money, right? Well, as things develop, she starts finding she has a knack for uh, body modification. And that's where the cringe factor comes in, because some of the things she does are kind of, oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there, there's this one girl who really tripped me out. And I have to say, I was kind of at a, uh, how, how do I say this? She was cute and creepy at the same time. She had all this work done to her face because she says through through the uh, through surgery I can feel I can look the way I feel on the inside and she looked very cupy dollish very very doll like. Uh, her cheeks were up to here and her her nose looked very odd but she looked almost like a mannequin and she had this really cute like Betty Boop voice and I was like oh but at the same time I was like Ugh. So, she, she asked her to do a huge favor for her, and she's throwing all kinds of money at, at Mary, you know, like, uh, two grand just to show up, and, and here's ten grand if you do the job, and another this, that, and the other. And uh, basically, she has a friend who wants to look like a doll, and she tells her, why are dolls looked at, at a, as a non, in a non-sexual way? Because they don't have all their parts. And she doesn't want a, like a mastectomy or anything like that. She just wants the shape, the womanly shape, but not the features. Okay? 
That's all I'm going to say on that. You, you got to see it to believe it. And then the lovely Soska sisters make an appearance, and that was the creme de la creme of this movie. I mean, the whole, the the vibe, the 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 chemistry that they brought was just completely over the top cool. Um, you kind of want to. You kind of want to hope that, that, that they make a movie just about those two characters. Their childhood, you know, and then, and then growing up. How, how did they grow up? How did they be, become so... I mean, they're, they're twins, they're, they're sisters, of course, in the movie. And they have this connection. They talk about this connection that they have. Which I'm almost willing to bet there's, there's a little bit of that in real life. I mean, seriously. I have cousins who are twins and they do have that connection. Not as extreme as they did, but... You know, there is a connection there, of course. So, in the movie, I was, I was just intrigued by what brought them to that point of, of just being that connected. What did they have to do in their lives to survive and, and be who they were at that point? How were they raised? What were they exposed to? Those kind of things really popped up in my head when I saw the characters. And, and then when they talk about the, the modifications they want done, the, you know, they, they ask for these very specific modifications. I already gave, a, gave away enough, so I'm not going to tell you what modifications they got. But there was one point when they said, we, we want that connection. We don't ever want to lose that connection. And if one of us dies, if something happens to the other, we lose that connection. So we never want to lose that. And the way they solve that problem is something you got to see. I think that was... Just a very excellent move. And just in case you think she took that whole surgeon thing laying down, you got another thing coming because she gives this guy what for. I mean, she, she really does a number on him. So if you have not seen American Mary, definitely, definitely check it out. Like I said, it's streaming on Netflix or buy the movie. I, I personally will be owning this movie. It's it's an excellent flick. I don't know why I thought it was going to be like uh, Alice or for some reason they on, I saw a DVD called Alice Kills. I don't know why they threw kills in there for. Then They just took the obvious and made it more obvious. Uh, I love that movie as well. Um, I thought it was going to be along those lines. And I guess in some respects, it is just in the fact that this girl changes her mind mode. But Alice was just nuts to begin with. She was real clingy and, and codependent. Mary was like that. Mary was just this girl who was trying to get by in medical school and life fucked her. And, and she became this whole other person. And uh, I, I liked it. I applaud it deeply. It, it just shows like triumph over, over something really ugly. And uh, I don't know if I would encourage anybody to go to those extremes but if you ever find yourself in a situation no matter how subtle or how extreme where you feel like you've been taken advantage of or maybe backed into a corner that you find the strength to come out swinging whatever way you have to that's what i took from the movie it was great like i said not a horror movie i'd say somewhere borderline like extreme exploitation i mean it's a little it's a little more than a drama definitely uh not action so i'd say yeah Exploitation. I mean, this is from the girls who brought you uh, Dead Hooker in a Trunk. So, there you go. I mean, that's it, it's a great movie. Definitely check it out. Uh, next up, Maniac. The remake of Maniac. Now, I have to tell you, and I, I don't think I'm alone here, but when I heard Elijah Wood was going to play that role, <laughs> I was kind of like, what? Are you serious? I mean, you talk about somebody who thought that they were completely banking off of the popularity of this guy. I mean, you got the Lord of the Rings thing going on, and, and you know, you figure, oh, everybody love Lord of the Rings. Let's put him in this movie because it will attract people to come see it. And, and that's what I thought. I thought that's all it was going to be. I thought it was going to be this empty, drab lifeless remake and all they were going to do was splash Elijah Wood on that thing as much as they could 
just to draw people into the seats. I was wrong. This movie was pretty fucking badass, people. Um, the original, of course, stands out. Now, there was a part in the original, there was this period of time in the original that I thought kind of, it drew out a little bit too much. It's when he's like, you know, talking to the models, he got the big sunglasses on, wearing the dicky, and he's just, you know, that, that kind of drew out after a while. But uh, this one kind of trimmed that little draggish part out. He, he had affection for this girl, and uh, he, he kind of catered to that emotion that he had for her. But uh, that was kind of short-lived, and I was glad for that. Basically, you got the same story. This, this kid had uh, some issues growing up. Um, his mother was kind of a whore, and uh, he, he's not balanced at all. What I really liked about this movie, what I thought was really interesting, was the point of view that they shot it from. Uh, Elijah Wood is only visible most of the time in reflections. Mirrors and things like that, or glass, or something like that. You usually see the person he's talking to more than you see him. And I thought that was really great because, like I said, I thought they were just gonna put his face everywhere they could so people would say, oh, Elijah Wood, Lord of the Rings, yay. You, you barely see the guy. You hear his voice and stuff more often than you see his face. And I thought that was absolute genius. The kills were brutal. Um, some of them were, were a little a little too easy. Like, you know, you, you can't just cut somebody's forehead and their hair just slips right off. That doesn't happen. That did happen in this movie. Um, I mean, Inglorious Bastards, I think, pulled off the whole scalping thing a lot better. But the fact remains that it, it, there were still some brutal kills. I thought they were abs absolutely great. There was like one or two of them that made me like go back, oh, what the hell was that? You know, and one was right in the beginning. So, um, all in all, I thought they did a, a pretty good job with the remake, and I thought they paid some really good homage to the original. So, I have no problem with this remake whatsoever. In fact, I encourage people to give it a, a look see. Um, like I said, that's also streaming on Netflix, which I was surprised. It, I wasn't expecting to see that on there so soon, and there it was, to my little heart's uh, joy and excitement. So, yeah, that was a double feature for me, American Mary and the remake of Maniac with Elijah Wood. Very, very cool stuff. What a great evening I had watching both of these. So that's my reviews for now. And before I close out this video, I've been meaning to say something for like the past two or three videos. And I always seem to just let it slip out of my head. So before I forget again, let me say what I got to say. I've been making these videos about two or three years now. I have 600 plus videos, I believe. And I'm rounding the corner to about a thousand subscribers. I'm at like 958 last time I checked. And I thank every single one of you. Every single one of you. If you only watch one video every six months, hey, it's appreciated, man, really. The comments that I get, I'm, I'm thrilled that I get those. Um, even the, the occasional troll that comes by and leaves his simplistic criticism of a video he probably didn't even watch. You took the time to leave a comment. I didn't like it. It was pointless. You suck. But still, thanks for stopping by. You know what I mean? So, what I'm saying, I said all that to say this. I've always loved talking about movies. Movies were, were my escape. When I was a teenager, didn't really go out much. Uh, my friends were into a lot of different things that I wasn't into. Sports, clubs, dancing, all that stuff. That wasn't me. So my escape was always was always uh, movies. Um, I remember when I got my first membership at a video store. It was like the key to the kingdom. I would rent a lot of VHS tapes because that was the medium at the time. And I would get everything from action to exploitation, but mostly it was horror. And if it had a little tag on there that said, banned in 36 countries, you're damn right, I got it. Uh, 
it was it was just this great escape from the boring reality that surrounded me. So since then, I've always loved discussing different kinds of movies. Uh, when I started getting into it very seriously, was I had a cousin who was deep into movies, and I started noticing, yeah, there's more to just than there's more to it than just watching the movie. You can develop, you know really solid opinions on it and you can sit and discuss these with people with other people with other solid opinions when I got my job at 24 at, at the video store and that was heaven for me because we had people coming in I worked the overnight shift so the people that come in during that time are a little off but way more fun to talk to because they got no place else to be so we'd stand there talking about different kinds of movies and different actors and and different uh, different genres and different time periods in film history and and that was always so great and this was before the internet became as huge as it is now so later in life when I started getting into the swing of things and talking to people online yeah every once in a while the, the conversation would turn to movies I'd be in chat rooms talking about this that and the other but Usually the chat rooms just kind of dwindled off into other conversations. I never really had somebody to seriously talk about movies with. And then one day, sharing my opinion on that old dinosaur MySpace, I had made friends with a certain girl who read some of the stuff that I had to say. Um, I started you know, talking about some of the movies that I was watching and, and giving my opinion on certain things. And uh, she kind of liked what I had to say. And she had a page, she had a separate page on MySpace where they were doing reviews, news, um, things of that nature. And she asked me, would I be interested in, in joining the team? And I was ecstatic because I didn't think anybody was listening to anything I said or read anything that I wrote. And I was like, uh sure yeah I'll give it a shot so I went with a name that I was given back when I worked at the video store uh, it was it was a mixture of two things it first started off with people always calling me dude hey man you got this movie dude hey man you got this movie dude and I I thought huh, movie dude and then one day I had said that to somebody say hey, movie dude that's me and they, after a while, when I gave all these suggestions for movies that people actually liked, they were like, that's the movie dude right there. So that was the name I went by, the movie dude. And uh, the name of the page was The Cult Crypt. And the name of the girl who I talked to and, and who invited me to be part of the Cult Crypt team was Heather Murphy. Heather Murphy, I guess, for all intents and purposes, kind of... I don't know if saying she gave me a voice, but she gave me a platform to share my voice. And that was my first experience in doing some actual critiques and reviews. And they're all written because I don't know what YouTube was. I didn't know any of that stuff. I think YouTube was still a fledgling attempt. It was before all the ads took over. It was just a place to post your videos, and that's all it was. Um, so, no, there was, there was no videos or anything like that. It was all written stuff, and some people would read them, some people wouldn't, but that was cool. And when she went on to, to pursue different things, uh, she asked that we keep the page alive, and that's when me and the other person writing, Tracy Anthony, took over. And we, we still wrote reviews, we still showed products that were coming out. And uh, it, he was great, great partner, great person to work with, um, Tracy Anthony. Thanks, Tracy. T-Dog, uh, I'll always appreciate that time. So out of all that, after a while, when YouTube started really taking off, and uh, I wanted to start getting into the swing of things, this is the channel that I came up with. Um, the name was kind of on the fly. I've told people before that I wish I would have picked a name that was more reflective of the genre that I, I like. I mean, I, I wanted to talk about all genres, but it seems like I always talk about horror and exploitation. Um, if anything else, if I was to keep the Cinema Junkie tag, I wish I would have called it The Cinema Junkie rather than Mr. Cinema Junkie. 
but that's the name I have now and that's what people know me as so I'm sticking with it but basically what I want to say is thank you Heather Murphy for having the faith in me to uh, to put my opinions out there for for liking what I did and, um, and for being a friend for being a, a really cool person to talk with and and chat with and and uh, and thanks because I don't think if I didn't have that start that I would be doing what I'm doing now because it really gave me a hunger to kind of share opinions and share uh, critiques and things of that nature so yes um, big big shout out to Heather Murphy uh, I wish I could put a link to her YouTube channel but for the life of me I don't know the name of it I've, I've seen about two or three channels under her name and, and the ones that I had I don't think are operating anymore so if I get a link, I'll definitely add it to the one below. Tracy, um, I know was doing reviews for a little while. He was showing so, showing off some movies, um, but I can't find that link either. So if you still got the channel up, Tracy, if you're watching this, uh, please tell me the link so I can add it here. Uh, both great people, and uh, I thank you both for for some really fond memories. And maybe down the line we can do some collabs and and see what's what, right? So, yeah, thank you guys. You've been awesome. Here's to both of you. Cheers. And here's to all of you who take the time to watch my videos and to listen to my ramblings. And I hope I entertain at least a few of you. So, as I always tell you, thanks for watching. It's much appreciated. And I don't say that because it's a tagline or it's something that I've trained myself to say. I really mean it. It's from the heart. Thank you. So until next time, guys, take care. Enjoy your movie watching, and I'll be seeing you all real soon.